Now, now you mentioned uh, something that is very important, and I mentioned this on the, on the channel many, many times, that just because you studied overseas and you learned Islam, that does not necessitate that you're a leader. You might be a great teacher. Mm -hmm. You might be uh, great at orator or whatever, or delivering or disseminating some Islamic uh, mm -hmm. you know, classes or whatnot. But that doesn't necessitate leadership, right? Leadership is something completely and totally different, yeah. right? And there is there is a disconnect with the people who follow in the black community and the people who lead. There's a massive, there's a wide gap more than any other community because we black folk will tear down our leadership. Mm. And this again is an unnatural, unorganic way of thinking or a way of, of basically codifying your culture. No, no other people do, does this. Nobody right. intentionally tries to tear down their own leadership. They don't do yeah. that. Yeah. We are the only ones who do that. And this again is something that is, is a part of our history and a part of our, our, our history in terms of interference, because this part of this quirk in the way that black folk think is something that J Edgar Hoover tried to implement. Mm -hmm. And have it going on autopilot with this with the Correct. Cointel, very famous Cointel Pro, Correct. right? And, he, and before that, even before J. Edgar, Edgar Hoover did that, we had uh, meritorious manumission laws, mm -hmm. which was essentially promoting scabbing within the the, the black community, right? Essentially, right. you know, when you were a slave, you could be freed if you had invented something that benefited white society, right. or if you had right. saved your white masters, right? Or, yeah. or if you had snitched on a runaway slave or a slave revolt, if you had snitched on these revolts and, and caused these uh, rebellions to be quelled, you would be given your freedom. And mm -hmm. I said it before, I believe that this meritorious manumission is an extent is oh, sorry, Cointel Pro is an extension of meritorious manumission because it right. It basically promotes the selling out and the the tearing down of your leadership, tearing down of your own people. And the quicker that we as black people see what the game is and what is actually going on, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, these are things that are mentioned in the both in the Quran and the Sunnah that if we actually practice, then we, we would get over this hump in terms of the way that the general public deals with the leadership and how the leadership deals with the general public. Right. You get me? Oh, you, yeah. You understand? Right. Mm -hmm. So there's this wide, wide, wide gap. Right. And it's hardwired in our DNA to go against our leadership. But yet we have the tools to quell this and nobody's addressing it. So yeah. if you want to go ahead and address it right now, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that I think that um, leadership is not something that we are taught to do. I don't think leadership is something that we are, we can't be trained. We're called to it. And I think that those who feel that they've been called to it, they have to move forward without fear of any criticism, just knowing that that's our, that that's our condition. Um, so that's, that's probably never going to not be with us. This thing yeah. of tearing each other down, that's at least not for a long time. That's probably going to be mm -hmm. with us for a long time. What we need yeah. now, we, we just need individual persons who, if you register the need and if you see the, 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 the issue, you step up to address it. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's the best I can say. I mean, I, I don't think, you know, we have these problems, but the problems don't define us, in my view. I just don't think mm -hmm. that they do. I think mm -hmm. that where we where we want to go as a people is much more important than the forces that are before us. But to just give some analysis to your point, that's true. I mean, if you read about the history of the slave rebellions and how they were mm. foiled, it was always another slave. Yep. It, it was mm -hmm. never. Meritorious man mission. Yeah, I mean, it it's like, it's, 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 it's actually crazy. It's like, we yeah. wanna, we're slaves. Yeah. We're actually all slaves. Why would you go tell on me? So, so yeah. that stays with us. Even, what's their most recent movie? Judas and the Black Messiah? Yeah, where, yeah. The yeah. guy, uh, you know, he, he kills himself a day after the, uh, the original. William, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. William can't remember. Or 
yeah, but yeah, after yeah. the original thing broadcasted, he, 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 because it was eating away at his soul, you know? So this is mm -hmm. something that has been put upon us. And that was Cointel Pro. That That's was Cointel Pro. Pro. Exactly. Yep. So if you look at Mer Meritorious Mini Mission, what was it? It was the Meritorious Mini Mission, which, which incentivized the slaves right. to put down the rebellions. And the yeah. Cointel period, what was it? It was the, the Cointel period, which incentivized infiltration and snitching and false information being spread within black roots to basically discredit yeah. and and tear them down and For that's why we haven't seen any significant uh black leadership since malcolm and, and martin because of this because of because this. of this and the closest thing that sorry in my opinion that we had is honestly but all honestly is lewis farrakhan that's right. the closest thing right right yeah. so but anyways I, I digress go ahead go ahead no Jay. no sorry. i mean i i would agree and, <laughs> and i think that the thing with farrakhan they i think they actually permitted him to <laughs> do his work because when you really analyze his work he's not calling the people to anything mm -hmm. he, he's not caught the nation of islam hasn't really built anything mm -hmm. um whereas before you know in the days of elijah muhammad we could look at the farmland and the, 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 the stores and the school system. The Nation of Islam under Farrakhan hasn't really built anything. It's more like a much more extreme version, I would say, is Dr. Umar Johnson. And Dr. Umar has his merits, but he doesn't call the people to anything. He just, he just complains yeah. about the state of the world. So what that actually does, it holds our productive energy in suspense. We're mad. We know we don't like it. We know that we're complaining about the world, but we don't have any rational, practical plan to do anything about it. So that's that, that, that we have. So when I go, so let's look at Imam Muhammad for a minute, particularly in connection with this subject. Imam Muhammad, one of his, he actually said this of himself, his job, he, he understood his role as giving his students perception, perception. Why? Why are we in this condition? Why is it that the powers that exist, why do they want blacks in this particular role to be non-productive? Why us? Why not the Asians? Why not the people of the Middle East? Have the people in the Middle East played a role in this? And if they have, why? What are they getting out of it? So it's almost like his, his job was putting, as I understand him, a, part, a big part of it was giving proper analysis so that we can have an understanding of what our condition is. And from that basis, we move forward. So we need a movement. I, some of my associates I'm actually calling for. We need a new movement based upon Islam, the purity of Islam, and the where we put into practice these things that we're talking about. Well, we, we, I think the new leadership movement is not to be one where we're all tied into like members of a body tied in it. Cause if you cut the head, the body withers, but we do need a strong association of, of brothers who are joined for a common goal. And th th that common goal should be based upon an agenda that we ourselves craft. And we hold ourselves accountable to it. It's not crafted by what I learned in my Islamic studies program. <laughs> it's crafted by what I learned from the religion and what my needs are as a people. So I, I think that we, we are in this particular turning point. And this turning point has called upon us to rethink and become reinvigorated in terms of what our goal is to be. And I think that's really where we are. All associates feel the same like we we all talk about the same thing everyone feels the same way so it's something that's the moment itself is stirring within us and, and we have to be we have to be linked together for that for that role or for that work i should say